In last lecture, we derived an equations for a characteristic diameter of pore, and we derived three versions, maybe four variants. The first was a conventional pore, then we derived the equation for di pore diameter based on the idea of constant shape factor of pore, version 1. Second was uh, the version 2, which give us the pore diameter for the idea of constant length of pores. And because some similarity, because this, uh, because some similarity between these two equations, the version 3 empirically generalize this to, to, the, to the equation which is here as a diameter for version 3. Today I want to comment, only short comment, uh, in short comment, some possible applications. Why? Because I said that we must to, to find our parameters in the relation to this or that process, physical process in last lecture. Independently, independently to, to physical process used, uh, let's imagine that we know fiber diameter, fiber shape factor, total fiber length and packing density of fiber assembly. And uh, we can in each case to evaluate porosity psi, pore surface area per unit uh, volume gamma p, conventional pore diameter dp star, and total length or conventional pores lp star. These quantities are independent to this or that physical process used. Now let us, let us think about the first process which is often used in textile and is a wicking of textiles or in textiles. <laughs> yes, uh, it's principally it's capillarity phenomenon, isn't it? Similar picture you know from physics. Um, uh, one is an immerse wall, second the white it is a air, and third some Bluetooth it is a fluid, for example, let's imagine water. You know that exist the surface tensions at the surrounding place of contact for circumference PP. It's a part of, of uh, this is the part of all some, 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 some uh, capillar tube or pore. Sigma 1, 2, sigma 1, 2, it is a surface tension on the border wall air. Uh, sigma 2, 3, si sigma 2, 3, sigma 2, 3, it's air fluid, air fluid, yeah? And uh, sigma 3, 1, it is fluid wall surface tension. Using the uh, equilibrium of forces in a vertical direction here, we can write that sigma 1, 2 minus sigma 3, 1 is equal to sigma 2, 3 times cosine this angle. And this angle is a characteristic constant for given media. This all you know from physics. Force which lifts the column of limit uh, of liquid over it is uh, perimeter of our uh, capillary tube times uh, this force sigma one two minus sigma three one, but it's equal to sigma two three times cosine theta. So that we can write this force is equal to this equation, where PP is a total real pore perimeter. 
No fictive borders, evidently. By the way, the uh, young Laplace equation for liquid pressure obtained by substituting the per sectional area SP. Uh, it's only a note, but uh, this sentence is a uh, young Laplace equation is mentioned in the teaching book about the physics or hydrodynamics and so on. Well, uh, this is the force which takes our liquid over. Why it is not so that the liquid, because it's force, is going over, 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 over to the end, to the top point of our capillary tube, and then it's fluid down, and so we have perpetuum mobile. <laughs> it is not possible, evidently. Why? Because there exists the force which is going in either direction. What is it? Intuitively say it. Where its weight of our ligit. Uh, let us denote that H is height of the fluid column. Uh, rho 3 is fluid mass density. And G is acceleration due to gravity. Then, weight of the lifted fluid column is following. Sp times H, this is a volume cross-section times uh, height, times uh, mass, fluid mass density, it's a mass, times uh, g, gravity, acceleration, and we obtain the force. Yeah? And uh, the height, with respect, respect to the force equilibrium, the height on which uh, the ligand is stable, is given by equivalency of these two forces. Force which takes our ligate over and force which uh, takes it down based on the gravity. So that Fc is equal Fg and using equations derived we obtain this, then this, and this, then this. It's only rearranging uh, explicitly for H. We derived, uh, we rearrange our equation. And so we obtain this equation. This equation, but what is this here? This is a one by conventional pore diameter. So we can say that, uh, uh, that our, our height which we measure in laboratory by wicking, is proportional, because this is some constant of proportionality, uh, proportional to y by uh, pore, uh, conventional pore diameter. Yeah? It is a gradual derivation. Nevertheless, or when we use on the place of uh, D, P, star, our earlier derived equation, then we obtain this here. It related to the ratio mu by 1 minus mu h, height, our h, our height. Well, uh, <coughs> nevertheless, sometimes it's better because this is only idealized equation. We don't think about the shape of pore and so on and so on. Therefore, maybe better is when on the place of a conventional pore, we will use our, uh, our uh, equation for pore according variant 3, which is which of? This one, this here, yeah? Because it can be more precise, so that we obtain for this H such equation, where uh, this is a material parameter, but mu by 1 minus mu is power to A. 
A uh, needn't be just equal 1, it can be some other quantity. So this is the, in short, the idea how to, how to study the wicking process in a textile uh, fibrous assemblies. Of course, if some special influences don't play a role. When you will study, for example, woven fabrics, then you must think about the, about the special character of this structure, about the, uh, 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 between yarns and inside yarns, and, and so on and so on. Yeah? But principally, this is the way how to, uh, how to um, go to the problem of this wicking. The second often used process, which I want to introduce here, is a flow through a porous fiber assembly. Different filters, filters are, are similar. Flow through the porous material. Uh, we will now and a minute speak about idealized porous material. Then we will go back to our textile structures. Let's imagine an idealized porous material like this here. Some compact red material, inside of which is a set of thin tubes. It is also porous material, a little larger than our uh, fibrous material, but it is also porous material. One tube, one tube is shown here. Length is H, starting pressure is P1, pressure, uh, the final pressure here is P2, evidently P2 is smaller than 1. Uh, total area here is G, and, that's, and the diameter of 1 one thin tube is dp, like uh, diameter of power. Well, p1 starting fluid pressure, p2 final fluid pressure, delta p, p1 minus p2 is pressure drop. In physics, is derived some physical law which is known as a hagen poise law. Hagen-Poise law is uh, one of known uh, law in physics. You can find it in uh, all this derivation in, in Handbook of Physics. And it says that, uh, that the quantity fluid volume per unit time, for fluid volume per unit time, which is going through one this uh, tube, is given by the uh, pi times dp uh, power to 4 by some constant uh, times eta. Eta is a dynamic fluid viscosity of our liquid. Delta p is, uh, is here, pressure drop. And h, you see, is a lens of our porous material. Well, G is for us total cross-sectional area. Mu is packing density in this cross-section. So that the, and SP serve uh, area of, cross-sectional area of our idealized cylindrical pore is pi dp squared by four. It's sectional area of one pore. So uh, total area, of pores, SP, it's a whole area of this ring, this total area capital G, times 1 minus mu. It's this white area inside, isn't it? Yeah, well, uh, so the, uh, this is this SP. Number of idealist po idealized pores, NP, in our cross section, it is this area divided by area per one tube, per one pore. Using our equations, we obtain that number of pores is this here. And volume of fluid flow per unit time, 
q it's uh, this volume per one tube times number of these tubes, these pores. Using equations we obtain this and after rearranging we obtain this here. Uh, using the equivalent pore diameter dp according to the version 1 and the surface area per unit volume of fiber gamma is 4 times 1 plus q by d both we derived earlier. We can rearrange dp because to this ratio we use this here so that we obtain also this structure this formula this and uh, so the dp is, is our only rearranging nothing new uh, dp is also possible to explain using uh, this uh, this formula and using this in this here we obtain this and after rearranging finally this here but this formula is it practically not no practically it's identical it's identical with uh, so-called karman kozeny equation. karman kozeny equation is a very known equation in hydrodynamic for flow through porous material. It's, for example, used in textile for um, uh, measurement of uh, cotton fiber fineness. Microner, for a microner, in microner instrument. Microner instrument works based on this uh, karman kozeny equation. By the way, Kozeny, Kozeny is Czech name. If he was Czech, I don't know, but Kozeny means in the English ladary, <laughs> from ladder. <laughs> its name, its name. These two authors, karman kozeny are uh, 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 very, very known. Well, so this is the equation which can uh, say uh, how is the fluid through the porous material. But we used, what we used, we used pore according variant number one. Maybe better is when we use the variant number three which is more general, have two parameters, K and A, yeah? which is more general. And uh, uh, then after rearranging using equations which are known for us, we obtain such expression. In opposite to this, here is not 3 and 2, here is A plus 1 and 2A plus 1. If A is 1, then it is adequate to, to kerman kozeny traditional formula. But A can be also 1 half or another value. What is the best? We must study our structure by, in laboratory by flow of some liquid, which is important for us. Yeah? Well... Third example, which I want to introduce in short, is aerosol filtration. Let's imagine, let's imagine an ideal structure, which was mentioned in lesson one, so-called hexagonal structure, uh, where, uh, of parallel fibers, where the, para, uh, the cylindrical fibers are lying in such position like the rings are here. Let's imagine that you have your red pen and you create these red lines so that to obtain the pores. Then you obtain the pores having such shape and, what, and through this, uh, the, the filtration through this, like the cigarette filter, through this structure, is going uh, to such pores. Uh, in this case, we can use the variant 2, because the length of pores is the same. Which of is length of pores in, rela in relation to length of fibers? Here, 
you can see therefore it is a colorette that to each fiber related two pores for this blue fiber this blue dotted uh, pores for uh, brown fiber these two brown dotted pores yeah to yellow to yellow dotted pores and then whole structure so that we can say that in the special model the quant the length of pores is uh, two times higher than the length of fibers because to one fiber two pores is common so that lp to l which is 1 plus q by k square is 2 so that k q for uh, cylindrical fiber is 0 so k is 1 by square root of 2 and uh, in this case according to the, the equation from dp in variant 2 and using k equal this we obtain dp according to this equation so it was three examples how to apply how to use our equations in different physical processes uh, I want also to introduce one practical result, one experimental result. It is every time difficult to exper experimentally to measure the pore diameter. Nevertheless, it exists some instruments. One uh, produced some porous material incorporation from US by NSU not Carleon State University, some, some, some company by this uh, university. They construct instrument named porometer, which is used also not only in the US, also abroad. Nevertheless, it's very, very expensive. In Czech Republic, uh, we have only one in a company near to town Brno. Nevertheless, because we have it, we, uh, based on some agreement with the people from industry, from this company, we measured some materials on this a little unique porometer. Which of material? It was, uh, it was uh, relatively heavy web 70 gram per square meter from polyester fiber 6.7 decitex. It represents fiber diameter 0.025 millimeter. Uh, the measurement is realized between two plates having distance, constant distance 7 millimeter. So the distance is 7 millimeter. And we gave between this uh, couple of plates uh, one layer, two layers, or three layers of our web. Therefore, we knew the packing density. The starting packing density was 0 0.007. Two is two times uh, 0 0.014. And this is three times 0 0.022. Density. This experiment was uh, organized for uh, non-woven application, for non-woven textiles. Therefore, we prefer small values of packing density. Yes, and uh, this instrument gave us the mean value of pore, equivalent pore diameter, as it's shown. This is, what is it? 0 0.3 millimeter, here it is 0 0.23 millimeter, zero it is 0 0.19 millimeter. Evidently what we write it, in increasing of packing density brings smaller characteristic dimension of pore. Let's show graphically our experiment. Our three, uh, there are a graph packing density and diameter, equivalent diameter of pore. 
Our three experimental values are here. This point, this point, and this point. Uh, first step was that we derived the best couple of parameters k and a based on statistical regression. What we obtained? We obtained k equal 1.52 and a was 0 0.43. When we use this uh, couple of parameters, we obtain the curve, the thick curve which is here. I think it's absolutely perfect. Okay. But interest, it was interesting that the value a was not too far from 0 0.5. We derived empirically, based on statistical regression, 0 0.43. Small difference to 0 0.5. Therefore, we said, OK, uh, let's to construct some, uh, some function, the relation between pore diameter and packing density, based on our idea number 2, version 2, constant length of pores. And we said, yes, a is 0 0.5 square root. And how is the best k? Best k is now 1.12. And we obtain the dotted line. When you see, the dotted line is also very near, very, very near to our experimental values. What we can say? It means that the physical process which used the instrument, this porosimeter, porometer, based on the, uh, it is a flow through some uh, layer, and it needs something like same length of pores. Yeah? The length of pores is constant. It's, it is also uh, because 0 0.5. Yeah? Uh, our theoretical example for a hexagonal structure is very far from our, uh, our results, so that this is not relevant for this, uh, for this results. When it is here, According to version 2, or very near to version 2, we can also say that it don't exist some universal instrument, principally don't exist and can also in future, will not be some instrument for a measurement of pore diameter, which is universal. Because textile structure have not only one pore diameter. It has so much diameters, yeah, uh, much uh, physical processes you used. To each physical process uh, corresponds an other diameter, isn't it? By the same structure. Therefore, this instrument is good, give representative results, it's well, but it measured the diameter, pore diameter, based on the physical process which this instrument used. Yeah? So it's the problem with pores, <laughs> in, the, in pore, pore layers. So we started from from uh, fictive borders, your red pen, and in the final, we must say, this red pen we have not. This red pen, uh, owner of this red pen is the physical process which used pores. Yeah, so it is. Well, maybe this is all for the pore. Thank you very much for your attention.